This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. A new study committee will look at how to manage Wisconsin's Sandhill Crane population and reduce the crop damage they cause. The group is made up of state lawmakers, farmers, and conservationists. There's talk of setting up a hunting season. The committee is expected to make recommendations later next year. Kamala Harris's husband campaigns in Wisconsin this weekend. Doug Emhoff will speak at the Hmong Festival in Wausau and to a Democratic gathering in Stevens Point tomorrow. Vice President Harris became the presumptive Democratic nominee after President Biden left the race on Sunday. The Summer Olympics start today. As Lisa Hale reports, Wisconsin will be well represented. 18 athletes from the Badger State will compete for Team USA in the Paris 2024 Olympics. The biggest name competing might be Indiana Pacers' Tyrese Halliburton. He's an Oshkosh native on the men's basketball team. The Paris Olympics officially kick off Friday and will last through August 11th. For Civic Media, I'm Lisa Hale. A proposed new building in Milwaukee would be the tallest in Wisconsin. And as Stuart J. Waddles reports, it would be the biggest wooden building in the world. A developer has been selected for the Marcus Performing Arts Center parking garage project. The $700 million effort could include up to 750 residential units, office and retail space, a hotel, and structured parking. Mayor Cavalier Johnson is praising the development, citing its potential to enhance the city's economic and urban landscape. Stuart J. Waddles reporting. Wisconsin wildlife officials are offering $25 rebates to get people to buy new endangered resources license plates. The plates raise money for the Natural Heritage Conservation Program and efforts to protect and restore native plants and animals and state natural areas. Senator Tammy Baldwin is introducing a bill to prevent sudden hospital closures like the ones in Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls this year. The bill requires large hospitals to notify federal agencies of a pending closure at least three months in advance. Baldwin is running for a third term against challenger Eric Hovde. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The city of Altoona is seeking volunteers to participate in copper and lead water testing. According to a Facebook post, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources requires the city to test for copper and lead to ensure the drinking water is safe. The city is also looking for homes that were built before 1983 that have not had their interior water service lines replaced, as those homes are eligible to participate in another testing program. Interested volunteers can contact the city for more information. Joining Our Neighbors Advancing Hope, or Jonah, held a rally at Wilson Park on Thursday calling for more public transportation in the city of Eau Claire. According to a WEAU report, organizers of the rally say their goal was to inform residents of how important public transit is as an essential service for the community and call for an expansion of funding and options by the city. They say at least 100 people attended the rally, including community members, public transit riders, and elected officials. The city of Eau Claire will be offering an in-person absentee ballot drive through to residents over the next couple of weeks. From Monday, July 30th to Friday, August 9th, city of Eau Claire residents will be able to use the drive through in the city hall parking lot on weekdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. to cast their votes for the August 13th primary. Residents will also be able to use the drive through to register to vote if they haven't already, and a vehicle will not be required despite the drive through title of the ballot drop-off location. The HSHS Act, or Hospital Stability and Health Services Act, was introduced by Senator Tammy Baldwin on Thursday. According to a press release, the new legislation is meant to protect communities from the sudden closure of essential hospitals. If passed into law, a closing hospital system would be required to notify the Department of Health and Human Services and develop a plan with public input to connect patients with accessible care. The notification would be required at least 90 days in advance of the closure. A number of Eau Claire County roads are now officially open to ATV and UTV travel. According to the Eau Claire County Sheriff's Office, the new availability for ATVs and UTVs cover a majority of the county roads unless there is posted signage specifically saying a road is not open for ATV and UTV use. A Facebook post from the Sheriff's Office also reminds residents that the open ATV and UTV travel only applies to Eau Claire County roads, not local township roads. A full map of the open roads is available online. 
The city of Eau Claire has removed all of the benches and picnic tables from Wilson Park, an area known to be frequented by the city's unhoused population. According to a WQOW report, city crews removed the benches and tables on Tuesday night, with officials saying it was because the crews noticed their deteriorated condition. The city's project management coordinator, Billy Huford, said there were no plans to replace the benches or tables this year. City officials said the removal was a matter of public safety. The Dunn County Fair is officially underway with good weather in the forecast all weekend. According to a WQOW report, this year's theme for the county fair is Christmas in July, so the fairgrounds have been decorated with Christmas lights and trees. The fair will run through Sunday and admission is $5 per person or $15 for a season pass. Kids under the age of 6 can get in for free and there will be no charge for parking. A full list of events and activities is available on the Dunn County Fair website. Marshfield Clinic's new Lake Halley Urgent Care Clinic will begin offering services in the next couple of weeks. According to a press release, the Urgent Care Center will open on August 6th and provide service Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Officials hope the new clinic will provide more convenient access for Chippewa Valley residents following the slew of health care closures earlier this year and take some of the pressure off emergency departments in the area. The clinic will be located on 27th Avenue. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. It's the Brewers and the Marlins. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers open a three-game weekend series tonight against the Marlins. The Marlins have just added former All-Star Randy Arozarena following a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays. Meanwhile, it appears that Christian Yelich has opted for rest and rehab rather than undergo season-ending back surgery. The 32-year-old Yelich is on the IL for a second time this season with back problems. Yesterday, at National Park in Washington, D.C., the Padres let right-hander Dylan Cease finish the the game with 114 pitches and just three walks on the Padres radio network. Abrams to right field. Johnson coming in. He makes the catch. No hits for the Nats. Dylan Cease throws a no hitter. The second no hitter in Padres history. There'll be a sea of San Diegans celebrating back home today. The Padres won three to nothing. NFL training camp. The Packers now practicing in pads today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Meanwhile, Jordan Love contract talks continue with sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. There's an expected huge blockbuster movie opening this weekend in theaters. Deadpool and Wolverine has been highly anticipated all summer and stars Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and Hugh Jackman once again as Wolverine. The film should clean up at the box office due to the popularity of the franchise, the studios behind it, Marvel and Disney, and the 81% on Rotten Tomatoes does not hurt either. There's something for comedy fans that opens this weekend too, The Fabulous Four. The movie stars Bette Midler, Susan Sarandon, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and Bruce Greenwood. The Fabulous Four is being called an uproarious comedy by the makers behind it. The plot sees three lifelong friends road trip to Florida to attend the wedding of another lifelong friend, Bette Midler. The film will have to rely heavily on the popularity of its actors and their track records as it is not reviewing particularly well. Then again, if you like the genre, the comedy doesn't necessarily have to be uproarious. At 15%, you just hope it doesn't make you clinically depressed. Have fun at the movies. Sometimes you hear things that can't be true. Here's one of them. John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard got married in Vegas to Paul Servino's widow, Dee Dee, after they met at the Hollywood Museum at an Abbott and Costello exhibit. All of that is true. People Magazine reports that the mediocre at best actor gave credit to God for bringing him and Dee Dee together. There is no word yet if Schneider will resend all of his comments to people like he does most of his insane political tweets. Also, according to People Magazine, Tom Brady and model Brooks Nader have been casually hooking up. They always break the big stories. People's inside source did not clarify if casually hooking up meant that when Brady gets together with Nader, he wears JCPenney activewear or if he's rounding third and headed for home. To be fair, an additional source says that they are not dating, and yet a third source says appropriately, who cares? Another season of horrible television is in the books after the Kardashians' season 5 finale. In riveting fashion, they all learn their biological ages, with O.J. Simpson's daughter Chloe learning that despite being 39, a TV quack doctor hired to protect the brand informed the least popular sister her biological age is actually 28. Whatever the hell that means. Other Kardashians who fared well were mom Chris, who found out she's actually six years younger than her actual age of 68. Kim Kardashian's real age is 43, but her biological age is 34. No word on what any of their plastic surgery ages are. In other news from the season finale, Kim Kardashian joked that after watching The Crown, she can totally rule a country, saying she's learned so much from a TV show. She felt the same way about boating after watching Gilligan's Island. Kardashian says she's excited to enter the actress phase of her career, seeming to forget she did a few very low-budget independent films years ago that launched her career. 
For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to get warmer and more humid as we make our way into the weekend. Today, mostly sunny. We'll get to around 84 today with wind out of the south at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 65. Tomorrow, sunshine 88. By Sunday, partly cloudy with a high of 86. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 66. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.